to this webinar. It's great to see you all. Uh, thank you for giving up an hour of your Tuesday evening to come and find out a bit more about Stepwise. This is the first in a series of webinars designed to help you to understand and learn a bit more about what the program's about. My name is David Salisbury and I'm the program manager for Stepwise. And Marion Brown, who is the program uh, assistant, is also with us this evening. Hi, Marion. Just say we are going to record this session this evening for those who haven't been able to join us. I hope that's okay with you all. And so tonight we'll be focusing on Faith Filled Life, which is the opening stream of Stepwise. We're going to look at the shape of the stream, what it's about and how it's designed to deepen your faith and your discipleship. We'll lead you through a very short exercise which gives a taste of the kind of activity and discussion that Stepwise involves. And then there'll be plenty of time for questions and discussion at the end. As we go along, please feel free to use the chat to ask any questions and we'll try to address these before we finish. But first, to get us started, I want to give a very brief introduction to Stepwise, what it is and how it works as a programme. Some of you I know will be already well versed in this, but for those who aren't, this is for you. I'm just going to share my screen with you. So welcome to Stepwise, a discipleship development program for everyone. A program that's designed to develop your discipleship and deepen your faith. A program that meets you where you are in life, in faith, in age and ability. Walking the Way is the United Reformed Church's intentional focus on everyday discipleship and Stepwise is part of this. It's the programmatic part of Walking the Way, if you like. What does Stepwise look like? Well, it's made up of five broad learning streams. The first is Faithful Life, the focus of our webinar this evening. Everyone begins uh, their stepwise journey with faith-filled life. It's shorter than the other streams and provides an introduction to how stepwise works in a practical way, as well as in character. And then there are four other streams, each of which has a particular focus. We'll be looking at these in more detail in the webinars that follow this one. But if you do want to find out more, you can visit the United Reformed Church's website uh, and look at the Stepwise pages, introduction, introducing Stepwise, and you'll find details about all of the Stepwise streams with stream outlines to, to download. Before we go on to look more closely at how Stepwise works and at Faith Filled Life in particular, I want you to meet Rose. Rose was one of our recent Faith Filled Life participants, and she told us about her experience of doing Stepwise, how much she enjoyed it, and what she gained from it. So here's Rose. Hello, my name's Rose, and I was part of the Somerset. A faith filled life group. I decided to join the course because I was at a point in life where I was uh, wondering where I was going in my faith. I felt I needed a new challenge. I was thinking maybe I should do some theological study. 
uh, and I was yeah I think I was just feeling a bit cheesed off with church and the general grind of life so I was looking for a new spark and so I was offered this opportunity to do the course and I decided why not even though I had no idea what to expect but I was pleasantly surprised. I asked Rose what she enjoyed most about Faithful's life. I think the thing I enjoyed most was the authenticity and honesty of our group. It, it was amazing. Uh, we, we covered all manner of subjects to do with faith and church and, and where we were personally. And it was really okay to say anything, to try out new ideas, to, to say what you thought without fear of judgment. And that was really liberating. I loved that. Then I asked how doing faithful life had challenged her. Of course, challenged me in uh, many ways. Um, it, it got me to do things that I wouldn't normally do, uh, for example, like journaling or drawing a spider's web. Um, yeah, it was really interesting, but challenging because they didn't come naturally to me at all. Uh, and it also uh, challenged me to to think about re what I really thought and to uh, listen and hear other people and where they were in their journeys and it, it was uh, very interesting. She told me how her faith has grown as a result of participating in uh, Faithfield's my, life. My faith has definitely grown as a result of, of doing the course and I, I have always been quite intellectual in my approach to my faith and quite wordy. And this course has really helped me move from my head to my heart and to become more involved in my faith rather than just sort of thinking about it and talking about it. That actually it's become a more integrated part of me, I think, as a, as a result of, of the course. And I think that was also very influenced by the people who were traveling alongside me and their differing approaches to their faith. And finally, Rose offers some encouragement to those who are considering taking part. Um, I would really encourage you to do it, uh, even if you have doubts or you're a bit skeptical, because I was, um, but it's, it's just brilliant because you, it gets you to think differently, approach stuff differently and uh, travel with people who maybe you wouldn't normally travel with in, in your day to day. And I can promise you that God and your fellow travellers will surprise you. So let's think for a moment about how Stepwise works. There are four key elements to Stepwise. And these apply to all of the streams. The first is the Stepwise Hub. Then there is the Stepwise Group. The third is your reflective journal. And finally, there's the mentoring aspect of Stepwise. Let's look at each of these in more detail. All of the material for Stepwise is housed, housed online in the Stepwise Hub soon to become the United Reformed Church's Learning Hub. This is where you will go to access the material for stepwise streams you are registered for, either as a participant or a facilitator. The stepwise material in the hub is arranged clearly, session by session, and is easy to access and work with. It's, it works well on a computer, a PC or a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet and help and support with working in this way can be offered if needed. Another aspect of Stepwise, a key aspect, is the Stepwise group. This can be a local group or has, has been happening since we've not been able to meet in person, an online group using Guess what? Zoom. Groups are ho hosted by a facilitator, or in some cases, a couple of facilitators, 
who will help the group to think, learn and reflect using material especially written for each session. This picks up on the preparation work that the participants will have done in the hub prior to the group session. Journaling and reflection are also important aspects in Stepwise. There are different ways of doing this, and we want to encourage creativity if this works for you. The purpose is to help you to think more deeply about the things you are learning and experiencing, and it may help you with the conversations you will have with your mentor. And so meeting with a mentor is an essential part of Stepwise. Being able to talk things through encourages deeper reflection. And we give guidance to mentors, both in terms of what is needed and what participants will have been looking at during the sessions. There is a small cost involved in taking part in Stepwise. We ask a fee of between five and 30 pounds on a pay what you can basis. And this can be arranged during the registration process. So let's think a little bit more about Faithful Life. As I said, Faithful Life is the opening stream of Stepwise. It's a stream that everybody will do before they then move on to one of the other streams. It explores identity, calling and faith, and begins to ask the question about how we see God at work in the world. That's a question which goes through the whole of Stepwise. Where did I see God today or this week? And thinking about our place and purpose in God's work are central themes of faith-filled life. Faithful Life is made up of six sessions. Begins by asking the question, why stepwise? Why now? What is it that's uh, led you to think about taking uh, stepwise to uh, beginning this programme? Setting out on your journey. And begins to look, think about and look at different ways of reading the Bible and thinking about the word mission, taking part in God's work in the world. Second session asks the question, who am I? Who am I in relation to other people, in relation to what I do, and in relation to God? And this session uh, begins to think about your identity from a theological perspective. Session three thinks about where you fit, where you fit in the world, what it means to be a Christian today. Where do you fit in God's plan? And how can you identi identify with what God is doing in your communities? Session four asks, and looks at the journey that you're on, the journey that you've been on in life and faith, and where it is God might be calling you to go. Thinking about your own walk with God and how that walk happens individually and with others too. When God has influenced your decision-making, Fifth session thinks about the challenges that you might face in your life and what resources your faith gives you to help you to face these challenges. And then finally, session six is uh, all about where you might go next, which way now, bringing together all of the things that you might have learned and thought about during faithful life and thinking about what you might go on to do, whether that be another stepwise stream or perhaps something else. 
Faithful life is a shorter stream, shorter than uh, one of the other four streams. It takes about three to four months to complete, uh, depending on how many times or how often the uh, stepwise group is able to meet together. So that's a bit more about what stepwise is and what makes up faithful life, the opening stream of stepwise. So now we're going to give you a taste of some of the material from one of the sessions in Faithful Life. And we're going to do this by leading you through an exercise that is part of the preparation work for session two, Who Am I? And which picks up on one of the, th one of the themes of Faithful Life, your identity. So together we're going to create an identity map, perhaps a little bit like this one that Elsa made earlier. Elsa's a character that you will meet throughout the whole of Stepwise and somebody we use to help to uh, illustrate and demonstrate some of the things that we'll be learning. Of course, if you were doing this for real, you would find the instructions in the stepwise hub and be able to complete the steps in your own time. It's an individual exercise that you would do as part of your preparation for the meeting with your stepwise group. This evening though, I'm going to lead you through the steps. These will appear on the screen, then I'll give you a few minutes to do it once I've given the instructions. So you've all come prepared with a piece of paper and something to write with. Uh, now's the time to, uh, to get that out. And so take your piece of paper. If you have it uh, in land landscape uh, format, that's, that's good. And begin by writing your name in the middle. And around your name, write some of the roles that you hold in life. For example, a daughter or son, a grandparent perhaps, a church member, the job that you do, and the other things that, that the roles that uh, make up who you are. And now add some of the things that you do that are important to you. Perhaps you're a swimmer or a dancer, or somebody who likes to read or write letters, or you're a film buff. And then finally, around each of these, add two or three words that describe you when you are in this role or identity. For example, if you said you're a teacher, you might want to say that you are patient or supportive and creative. But try to be honest with yourself. But then again, don't be too hard on yourself either. The point is simply for us to get to know ourselves a bit better. And so we'll give you a few minutes just to do that exercise. And I'll leave the instructions on the screen while you do so.
that's one of those exercises that you could take quite a long time to do if you really thought about it but I uh, hope you've had enough time just now just to uh, to make a start at least and so just looking at your map think about the following questions how have these roles shaped your life. And thinking about the words that you use to describe your life, do they suggest that any role is particularly life-giving for you? Do any of those same words reveal any special skills or experiences that you bring to a role. And finally, ask yourself, is the picture of you, the picture you see in your map, the one you expected to see? Again, just take a few minutes just to reflect on those four questions. There are many ways we can construct our identity. Some of you will have thought in terms of where you spend your time, others perhaps in terms of what you do. If your identity map doesn't contain anything related to your Christian life or your faith, then add something now using any words which describe your experience of your identity in God. And these can be words that are as descriptive as you wish. And then finally, looking at your map with the roles and identities that you've included, highlight the one which is most important 
to your sense of identity, your sense of who you are, and the one or two identities in which you spend most of your time. I don't know whether the map that you've ended up with looks anything like the map which Elsa drew at the beginning, but it's your map and is personal to you. So I'm guessing that they will all be different. Remember this activity forms only part of the preparation work for this session, the work that participants do uh, on their own using the Stepwise Hub before they then go on to meet together in their group. The session goes on to look more deeply at who we are in God's eyes and what it means to be God's people. The map that you've drawn will be a useful resource to help you and support you when you talk uh, with your mentor about identity. And then you would go uh, or be part of a group session, which would focus again on the uh, material that you've looked at in session two. So what might you expect to happen in the group session? Well, first of all, there'd be uh, some opening worship and that all important stepwise question, where did I see God this week? time to think and reflect together about how God's been working in your life and in the life of the world. There'd be some Bible study, reflecting on some readings that explore God's relationship with God's people, or other readings which, uh, are in, uh, which would uh, help to illustrate and lead us uh, more deeply into the subject for that evening session. And there'll be some questions to help us think about what it means to hold the identity of God's people in the world. And in this particular session, there's a video to watch. The group sessions are designed to take place to last for about an hour and a half. Uh, some groups who've met on Zoom have split them up into, into smaller, uh, smaller lengths. So they've, they've met more often, but they've, uh, they've met for shorter times. Uh, and in uh, Faith Filled Life, although there are six sessions, uh, there's uh, one of the sessions probably takes two meetings. So uh, you can reckon probably in Faith Filled Life to meet as a, as a group, maybe eight or nine times. What we're going to do now, obviously, we, we can't uh, emulate very well a, a group session. And in fact, the, uh, the whole of, of doing this like this is, is a little bit artificial anyway. But we want to, uh, to split up into breakout rooms uh, just to, uh, to think together uh, about how it felt doing this exercise. Was there anything that surprised you uh, as you did it? And then 
maybe to think about what questions you might have for us uh, before we end our session this evening. So we're going to break up into uh, into groups of four or five people. I can't work out how many people are there, but uh, my, my technical support has, has uh, worked out the groups you're going to be in. Uh, so just spend a few uh, moments just introducing yourself and then uh, thinking about those three questions that are on the screen. How did it feel to do that exercise that you've just done? Has anything surprised you? And then what questions might you have for us later on? Okay, we'll see you on the other side, as they say. Hi, everybody. Oh, there we are. Thought we'd lost somebody, but we haven't. <laughs> Good, well, welcome back. I hope that was a uh, a good experience for you and you got to chat with some people you perhaps don't know and uh, uh, found out a bit more uh, about uh, this uh, wonderful family that we all belong to in the United Reformed Church. So we've just got uh, about 10 minutes left uh, this evening and so uh, we're just going to open the floor for any questions that you might have want to ask of me or uh, of, of Marion in the Stepwise team. I'll put it over to you. Hello, I'd like to ask you, I think we, we have met a little while ago, well, a couple of years ago now, when the Stepwise was just about to start. Okay. In the Essex in the Eastern Synod area. And I, as far as I know, there's not been any step at all in the area and I did wonder um because I sort of sent off the email ages ago you know you said this sort of this thing about, say an in, express an interest in doing it and as far as I know uh, it hasn't ever happened in in the eastern synod or in the Essex area now that everything's online because of Covid is it possible join an online group which is not necessarily in an area that's offering it at the minute uh okay uh, i can there's, there's two answers to that question the first of all is that eastern synod have actually just start just just got a group together that uh, lindsay brown who's the uh training officer in eastern synod has uh, i think literally over the last Two week. or three weeks a week. re no, registered week. a group so maybe yeah. you, you you didn't get uh, not notified no, about, I mean, it was, but we so i'm sorry about i thought we'd ago, i thought we'd uh, pass it on to and, and then i heard nothing more. And okay, well. since then i I'm actually on a talk at the Westminster College, so I'm kind of done other things in the meantime, you know. Okay. But, um, so hopefully there is some, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, to, to, I, I could certainly uh, put you in touch with Lindsay because I think she's hoping to, you know, now they've, now she's doing one, there may be others to follow, and there may even still be the opportunity to join right. the one that she's just uh, she's just started. But in answer to your other question, yes, yeah. everything is on on Zoom, and we do uh, we have, you know, perhaps in recent weeks been able to to match up some interest interested people with with groups who are you know miles away that would never have been possible right. if we were meeting uh, you know in the sort of face to face mode so yeah i mean that it, that is happening uh, oh, but i cool. made a note of your name yeah. jean and, and i'll uh, i'll certainly refer you to to Lindsay. what what we what we try and do is put people in touch with their synod contacts first because we know we want synods to uh, to be to be involved and to take some ownership of, of stepwise but uh, but we can sort of coordinate things from a, we can take a step back and see what's happening across the, across the denomination as well so uh, yeah well, thank right. you for that question that's yeah, helpful Anybody else? You need to unmute if you're muted. I think Ruth's trying to talk. I can see. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, good thing to mute me, really. Um, how do you know if there's some if if stepwise is happening in your own synod or not? Well, we hope that synod uh, stepwise coordinators, and that might be the training officer, it might be somebody else, will will communicate that uh, with with churches and with people that they're in contact with in, what, in whatever way uh, that happens. Uh, when we get inquiries from, from, from synods, what we're going to try and start to do is let 
other synod coordinators know that, that these are that groups are beginning to happen or there's interest so we can get a, a picture uh, but uh, I think you know we we haven't got a, a centralized sort of way of pr displaying where groups are but you know we, we, we try and do that sort of by, by word of mouth uh, with with synod coordinators. Anything, any other questions? Nobody? David, you've said about the, the length right. of the sessions, but what sort of time commitment overall would, is it looking at? Um, so you've mentioned a mentor, but that's not not in the sessions. You've mentioned about stuff on the hub. Um, so, so how, if you would say an average for a week, for example, what would you be looking at? Uh, it's probably easier to answer to to say how long it might take to, to I mean, say to work through the material for for a group session in the hub. It's, they've been written and designed to sort of take sort of between 45 minutes and, and an hour, uh, just depending on what that, the activity is and, and I guess how how deeply you w w wish to go in, into it. But so so the, the hub preparation uh, is probably about, say, yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, meeting with mentors, uh, we recommend 45 minutes as a kind of the maximum length of time uh, for that. And then, uh, so the group session maybe take uh, an hour and a half. Uh, but it, I, I don't think I know of a step by group that's, that has met weekly, uh, mostly uh, in faithful life. People have tended to meet sort of uh, every other week or, uh, or sort of th on a, th a three weekly path. But I think to do it weekly would be quite a big ask, uh, to be honest. So I don't know what what what, what that adds up to. Both about three hours over over a fortnight, maybe an hour and a half a week. Is that is that is that okay? And if you if you were you know uh, intent on on creating a, a really creative journal, then that could take uh, as long as, as as much time as you want to want to give to it as well. So uh, yeah. yeah. Dave, how, how, how does the mentoring work online? I can see how the kind of, you know, you do your yeah. own stuff, you've got the hub well, stuff, I, you've got the, the, the journal. I mean, mentoring uh, is uh, basically sort of one-to-one -one, uh, meeting with some with somebody else. Uh, there is, like I said, we've got guidance, guide, guidance for mentors and for participants, just to help mentors know what participants have been doing in each session. Uh, we don't want it to be a, 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 a too, too much of a prescriptive discussion. You know, yeah. we want participants to be able to, to share with mentors about what they've, uh, what they've done. And uh, so I guess it's, uh, you know, arranged to meet with your mentor online uh, for 45 minutes. And, uh, and you know, we, we'd hope that after the first couple of meetings, then that conversation would 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 flow uh, more more easily. Mm -hmm. We we to say something about mentors. We in right from the very beginning, you know, lots of questions about who are the mentors, who can be a mentor, and the rest of it. And and in the end, we we've we've sort of uh, decided that in faithful life, at least, then participants in the first instance uh, are asked to to find a mentor, you know, to approach somebody that they know and they can right. trust and. Uh, that they could see as being that uh, that that friend, you know, that to walk with them uh, through through stepwise, uh, and that seems to have been the you know, that that seems to be the 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 right way about of, of doing yeah. things rather than sort of matching people up because we haven't got the capacity to do that. No, we don't no, know no. people well enough to do that, but yeah. uh, but yeah, so that, that tends to work quite well. Good idea. Thank you. Paul, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask you a question about the, the webinars, David. Uh, the, you said that this session was being recorded. Um, are the ones in future weeks going to be recorded as well? And, I would uh, I would hope so, yes. And where might where might they end up? Um, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm 
I, they probably could end up on on the uh, denominations YouTube uh, channel, but we'll uh, we'll check that out with with comms. Uh, but that would be the the obvious place for them, I guess. Okay, brilliant. Je you. Jenny Mills is nodding, so I guess that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, must be right then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got the. I'll show you the screen at the end with the with the dates for the other other webinar sessions. So uh, yeah, just that nobody's asked about the size of a group, uh, and uh, I think that's you know quite quite an important thing. When we were meeting face to face, we we used to sort of reckon that a group of uh, of half a dozen was probably as small as you want to go, but you could probably manage with with five, uh, and then as as large, I guess if you if you if you had more than more than say 15 or 16, then it might become a bit too unwieldy for, for one facilitator, but there's no reason why you can't have more than one facilitator. Uh, online, it's probably just slightly less than that. You know, so you're talking about 10 maybe as a, as a, as a, as a good size uh, to make the, the, the group work. So, uh, yeah, Richard. Um, I was just wondering, you know, that last question had me a bit worried then. Um, the breakout rooms, that wouldn't be part of it if it was on YouTube. No. Or no. No, okay. no the, 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 the webinar recording is literally oh. this, the, the, the plenary yeah. session. So we'll, we'll, we'll edit out the 15 minutes of silence or 15 minutes of, uh, of, uh, of chat that we had while you were in the breakout rooms. <laughs> so thanks for that. Okay, I'm going to ask Marion if she can just uh, tell you for a few uh, minutes or uh, how to get involved with Stepwise because uh, that's the all important question of what do we do now if you want to want to go ahead and think about it further. So Marion. Mm. Well, some of you um, may have already signed up, but for those of you who haven't, just contact me on marion.brown at urc.org.uk or just via the Stepwise Hub directly, because I check each of them every day. And I'll let you know exactly how to start. I'll let you know if a group is already started in your area and you might be able to join as we've just recently done. And um, then we'll take it from there. And it will also be great if you, um, Paul was just talking about the other webinars. It will be great if you could encourage anybody else who uh, may not um, have heard about the webinars to come along to the future ones that David is uh, about to spring up on and you to see all the different dates there. Um, but yeah, um, I'll finish you with everything you need to start your stepwise journey for either yourself or for your church. So just, um, just send me an email and we'll get things going. Marion, could I just ask you what your email address is again? Of course, it's Marion with an O. Mm -hmm. Dot brown. Brown, right. Yes, as in the colour. At urc. Mm -hmm. dot org. Dot uk. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. most welcome. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's in the chat. There we are. Thank you. Well, thank you all for uh, for coming this evening. I hope that you found that. Uh, useful uh, and informative and if you've got any questions at all then you can email Marion, email me, uh, uh, you can use the stepwise at urc.org.uk email address and that finds its way to Marion as well uh, and there's a wealth of information also on the uh, on the URC website the uh, urc.org.uk forward slash stepwise. So I guess we'll see some of you uh, in a couple of weeks when we think a bit more about faithful worship but uh, Good night, and it's going to be good to see you all. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks, David. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.